It's that time of the year, my friends, when we look back over the best TV tech of the year. And in this video, we'll be looking at my best TVs for 2021. Let's get started. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So as 2021 draws to an end, it's a great time to look back on the best TVs of the year. And we're doing that for a number of reasons. One, most of the TVs that were coming out have now come out and they've all been reviewed and tested. And also, a lot of the TVs that came out earlier in the year are actually now on offer at a discounted price. So the prices that we paid back in April, May and June are significantly cheaper. And I'll leave links in the description for you to follow those for yourself. Now, it's very, very subjective coming up with a top three, top five, whatever it may be. But the way that we're going to do it is looking at what we think is the best value for money. Because there are lots of very expensive TVs, but for the majority of people, they won't be in that market. So in this video, we'll be looking at the best value TVs. Now, as well as price, we'll also look at the different technologies. So, for instance, recently we looked at the LG QNED 8K Mini LED. Now, this thing was incredible. It was a stunning TV, but it's not going to feature in my top three because the price hasn't come down far enough. And also, I just don't think the technology is quite there yet. There's not enough content in 8K. So as great a TV as it is, it's not going to make it in my top three today. So another TV that made it very close this year to being in my top three was the Samsung QN90A. Now this was in many ways my favorite looking TV of the year. The design I think is exceptional and I don't think the Samsung have got anything wrong with it. Certainly I love the fact that they've thought about this TV being used in the majority of homes. It looks good. It's not a thick TV, but it's not thin, but it's completely acceptable. It has a great look to the back. It's got cable management built in, and it's also a nice design. It's the same size all the way down, so it fits brilliantly if you're going to wall mount it. And it's got on a stand, it's got a stand that will fit pretty much any soundbar available on the market. So I tried it with my Sonos Beam, for instance, and it fitted like a glove. And also I tried it with my Arc. And again, as you can see, it worked really well. So this is a TV that just ticks so many boxes, but it's the quality control issue that I've got the problem with. So what I've found over the years, especially with Samsung TVs, is it does seem to be a little bit of a lottery as to what type of panel that you get. Now, I've had some horrendously bad TVs in the past from Samsung that have got big square blotches in the middle of them, and this QN90A definitely suffered really badly from DSE, or dirty screen effect, or vertical banding. Now, in some scenes it wasn't that noticeable, but in others it was absolutely incredible. And it was almost just completely impossible to watch. If you look at this scene, for instance, you'll see that there's almost a grid appearing as it rolls through the colours. And that is then visible on normal TV. And when you're watching it, and this is what it actually looks like. Look how bad this panel is. Now, to a degree, all LCD TVs potentially can suffer from DSE and banding. In fact, I'm going to show you something on a Sony in a little bit, which has a minute degree of this. But for some reason, and this isn't any hate against Samsung at all, because I love the TV in every other way, but it just seems a little bit of a lottery whether you'll get this problem. And so therefore, it can't make it in the top three, guys. One TV that is definitely going to make it in there is the LG OLED. And the one that I'm choosing to go into the top three is going to be the C1. The reason why I've done that is I've looked at the A1 and the B1 this year, and obviously this, the C1. But this LG C1, just being four millimeters thick, giving an incredible picture, is without doubt one of the best TVs of the year. And we'll see where it finishes in the top three. One of the things I love about it is that it is great for gamers. It's got four 4K 120 Hertz HDMI 2.1 ports, and it supports VRR and FreeSync and G-Sync. So all of those things that gamers like are there. Now, from a picture quality point of view, I use mine in a room where I use it mostly in the evenings. And so therefore, things like reflections are not an issue at all. And also, because I'm in a darker room most of the time when I'm watching this, 
I'm not so worried about the brightness of the TV because OLEDs are traditionally a little bit darker than some of the QLED TVs and QNED TVs that are out there. But it's not so much of an issue and what you notice is because of the perfect blacks and the incredible contrast on these TVs, it just absolutely blows your mind. Now, I was thinking about the A1, the B1, or the C1, and it's the gaming capability, together with the price reduction, and there's a link in the description which will lead to that, that has put this firmly in the top three. Now, another OLED that I wanted to talk to you about is the Sony A90J. Now, this on paper, and in my opinion, does things better than the LG C1. I think if you're watching HDR content, if you're watching movies and they were side by side, I believe that the Sony would deliver a better picture. But is it the one that you should buy? Well, for me, this is then where it comes down to value for money. Now, without a doubt, it's an incredible TV and it's got lots going for it. But for me, I want a TV that does everything well because I do everything on my TV. It's not just about watching movies or watching HDR content. And so therefore, any of you that like gaming at all and want to use the features of VRR, well, this is going to be another issue because although they've started rolling out these firmware updates, there's still no sign of them on the 2021 models. And that really, at this price point, causes an issue. And price is another reason why this TV is, is really just just missing out on my top three. And that's because at the time of making this video, this hasn't really budged at all in price. Whereas the LG C1, as you'll notice from the link in my description, has come down 500 pounds already or $500. And that makes it an even more attractive option in my opinion. Okay, so although the Sony OLEDs have not made it into my top three, the Sony X90J has. I absolutely love this TV. I love the X900H from last year, and this is a marked improvement on that. The picture quality is incredible. I absolutely love the way that it handles colors. Right out of the box, it is an amazing TV. And again, I'll leave the link to my full review if you're interested, which I only actually did a few weeks ago, but even right Right at the end of a busy year reviewing TVs, this is one of my favourites. Now had this had the VRR update, it would have probably made it into second place in my top three, but unfortunately it's got to settle for third, but it's a great TV. Now in second place is going to surprise most people. This is the Samsung AU9000. Now this is probably a TV that many of you have not even bothered researching or looking at because it's half the price of the majority of the other TVs that we've spoken about today. But I was really impressed with this TV. I couldn't fault it in many ways. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It produces a pretty good image, even though I did forget to put the stand on and I slated it for having the worst stand available. And when you look at this picture, you can see that it actually doesn't look too bad. What this TV does is deliver a really good fresh image. It, the panel, compared to the QN90A that I had, this panel is perfectly clean. Now, I may well just have been unlucky with the other panel and very lucky with this, but this was one of the Crystal UHD TVs. I also had the Crystal UHD TU8000 last year, and I was really impressed with that. And so this is also another great TV. So this is gonna be my second place. It does a good job and it's half the cost of the QN90A. And in terms of the image quality, it's not bad. Yes, it's missing some of those 4K at 120Hz features, but this is pretty good. Now this is the result of the poll that I did and I'll go into a little bit of detail. Here we had 1200 votes just within one day and 61% of people chose the LG C1 OLED. Only 22% but still notably came second was the Sony A90J and from the comments a lot of people were saying that they did feel that maybe side by side the Sony would have had the better picture in certain scenes, however they felt the value for money lay with the LG C1. So there you go guys, 61% of you are just like me and we are correct. I'm only joking guys, it is obviously a matter of opinion, but what I think that this exercise does underline 
is it's not just about the TV, it's about the price that you pay. And at the moment, with the deals that LG have on on their OLED TVs, there's never been a better time to buy this incredible technology. I loved it at the full price, and I paid full price for my LG C1, so don't think that I'm pushing it just because of that. But also is the beauty of OLED technology. These OLED TVs are just absolutely stunning. And once you have one and once you've seen one, most people if they've got the right environment to put it in, will not go back to anything else. It is just a question of just stunningly good to look at. And whether you're playing games or watching movies, OLED technology is probably the way forward for most people. Now, what I'm hoping for is over the years to come, and in 2022, we'll see them develop and get even brighter, and so therefore they compete with the QLED TVs and QNED TVs on that brightness level a little bit more. And then the gap, if it's a bright room, won't be such a problem. But for me, if I had to take one TV from the year, it would be this one here. What's your thoughts, guys? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope this has been helpful. And if there are any of those TVs that you want to purchase, well then check out the links in the description. They will all be there for you. Thank you, my friends.